Following on from my competition winner, Adam B's suggestion of, I would love to see how you learn a new track, how you build speed and confidence and show one of your first laps of the race weekend versus your fastest lap of the race weekend. Today, we're gonna to look into that topic. I'm gonna to show you how I learned, built confidence and then set the GT3 lap record at the Bilsterberg circuit in the BMW M6 GT3 car. Hello, my name is David Pittard. I'm a Nürburgring champion, international racing driver and driver coach with over 20 years experience in the motorsport industry as well as all-round petrol head. Today's video is a continuation of the How To Motorsport series and this is a suggestion that's come in from my competition winner, Adam B. Today we'll break down how I learned Bilsterberg circuit and I'll pass on to you my hints, tips and tricks on how to build confidence and speed to optimise a new circuit, a new car or new track conditions. Before I jump into the main part of this video, there are a couple of things that I'm just going to mention that are relatable to this video. Number one is that I know the car inside out. I've driven the BMW M6 for a long, long time now, so I know its characteristics pretty well. And when I came to the new circuit, I was able to optimise those characteristics very quickly. So it wasn't all completely new to me. And another part of learning and building confidence quick is preparing correctly. I'd watched enough onboard video that I knew where the circuit went and what to expect. I already highlighted in my mind what and prioritised what the main corners were or where there was a particular, particularly technical or tricky area that I really had to concentrate on. And also from that video footage that I watched, I'd also worked out which curves I can and couldn't use. And when I went out for my first run and for my fastest lap run as well, my tyres had just come out of tyre heaters. So I didn't have to warm, warm the tyres or anything like that. I was just straight on it and had the grip that I needed straight away. So delving into the data, this is the VBOX video circuit tool software that I use to analyse the VBOX video data. Uh, so we can see where the main differences are. <clears throat> and first of all, we can see even at turn one, this is one of my first fundamental points is braking at 100% of the car's capability as soon as possible. So if you're in a car where you need to warm the tyres up, wait for the tyres to warm up a bit, but after you've got the heat in the tyres, really nail the brakes as hard as you can. If you've got a car with ABS, then it's even easier. Just nail the brakes as hard as you can, somewhere where you think you can uh, is, is where you should be braking. And if you come up 100 metres short, if you come up 50 meters short, you will learn a lot more than if you just gently press the brake and roll into the corner. So point number one is brake as hard as you can as soon as you can. That way you can see how quickly and how short a distance you can actually stop the car and then you can start to apply that to other places around the circuit. So if we look at the data here, even though I've rolled off the throttle a little bit earlier, my gradient of how quickly I'm stopping the car is basically the same as from my first lap to my fastest lap of the race weekend, which is the red lap. And the blue lap is my first lap of the race weekend. So then I can then apply that at turn one. Turn four is exactly the same. That Even though it's my first lap of the weekend, I know how quickly the car can stop. I know um, how much grip the tarmac has got. And I can apply that to turn four. And I can see that the gradient, the braking point and the gradient is very, very similar as well. Other big braking points like uh, at the end of the back straight here, again, the gradients are exactly the same. It doesn't matter that my braking is a little bit early and I over slow the car by ultimately 30, over nearly 30 kilometers an hour. That's still my first weekend, the first lap on, of the weekend at the fastest point of the circuit. The fact that I've braked as hard as I can gives me an idea of how quickly the car can stop. It gives me a confident, gives me confidence on how quickly the car can stop. And I can apply that to all the major braking points of the circuit. That allows me to stay on full throttle for longer, brake as efficiently as possible in as short a distance as possible. And I can apply that to the rest of the circuit. So that's tip number one. Nail the brakes as hard as you can, as soon as you can. And I don't care if you come up too short, you'll learn more by coming up too short than you will if you just uh, roll into the Coming to point number two that I can see from my data of the first, first lap of the race weekend and the fastest lap of the race weekend. And that is the two slowest points of the corner, of, of the lap, sorry, turn one here and the final corner here. My minimum speeds are exactly the same, even though it's lap one of the weekend and the final lap, of the, the fastest lap of the weekend. 
And that's because in the slowest corners, there, there's the least amount of consequence. Therefore, you can push the car as hard as you can with, without anything drastically going to go wrong here. So I'm exploring what the maximum lateral amount, what the amount of uh, maximum cornering force I can generate from the car that I can put into the tyres at those slow points. If I were to start doing it at the fastest point in the corner of, of the track and get it a tiny little bit over, then I'd be off in the barriers. But there's no excuse not to experiment with how much grip the car and the track has at those slow points on the circuit. So you can see here at turn one, I am one kilometre an hour down at my apex speed on my first lap of the weekend versus my final lap, of the, fastest lap of the weekend. Same for the final corner here, one kilometre an hour down minimum apex speed. Whereas you look at some of the medium and higher speed corners, uh, that's where I'm still building up my confidence. There's 10 kilometres an hour there, um, over 10 kilometres an hour there, over 10 kilometres an hour there, and as previously mentioned, nearly 25 kilometres an hour at the fastest corner on the track. So I'm actually gauging laterally how much grip there is in those slow speed corners. I've already gauged it from how hard I can brake as well. Uh, and then I can start to transfer that to those medium and higher speed corners, which we'll now start to touch on in a second. But point number two is explore the level of grip in the slowest corners on the circuit. So now we're going to delve into medium and high speed corners. What's the best way to gain confidence in these types of corners? So because we've previously noticed that the blue lap in the medium and high speed corners, there's 10 kilometers an hour difference, there's 30 kilometers an hour difference. We're going to get rid of that, that lap now and we're going to use my fastest lap from my first session. So it's still only my fifth lap of this track uh, on the first day, but you can already see from the black line versus the red line that it's much, much closer together now, the, especially the medium speed corners here. And there's a particular corner which I'm going to focus on, which is this corner here. So just to give, give you an idea where it is on the circuit, uh, it's just coming out of turn four through the left right left over the hill and now we're breaking in a straight line for the downhill left hander as the track drops away. I've now zoomed in on this corner because uh, we really need to hone into the detail of how I'm breaking down this corner. Firstly, braking gradients is, exact, is very similar. So that shows that I'm braking at the optimum even though it's, I'm, I'm a 7 k's an hour down on the way into the corner because I'm still building confidence from the previous corner and because I'm braking my optimum I do over slow the car and as a result I've finished my braking um, at a very similar point because I've, I've slowed the car down in the optimum amount of time uh, however I'm still 8 k's down as I get to turn in. I can kind of feel that it's a little bit slow, it's a little bit early so therefore I can come off the brake I've sufficiently slowed the car down. I'm, I'm, I haven't, I'm not turning in and thinking, oh, I should have slowed down a little bit more. This is going to get a bit interesting. I've, I've nailed the brakes. I've got the car stopped at the, at the maximum minimum speed I, I need for that corner. As a result, I can come off the brakes and then just roll the car in and then just without accelerating or braking, turn the car in, purely turning and maximize my turning at this corner here. I've gauged how much grip the circuit has from the slow speed corners so I can start to feel in myself, that's the, that's the sort of seat of the pants uh, feeling that you hear racing drivers talking about, you're feeling how much g-forces you can, you can transfer into turning the car without touching any other input. That gives you an idea of how much lateral force, how much turning force the car has. And from this point here, I'm um, 125 kilometers an hour. And I'm still rolling, rolling, rolling until now I'm past the apex and then I'm going to accelerate the car. So I've lost three kilometers an hour in that rolling phase without touching the throttle. Now I'm on the throttle. Now I'm going to accelerate the car after the apex. Then I can start to gauge how much traction I've got on the exit of this medium speed corner. But the fact that I've braked in a straight line, finished my braking, turned in, finished turning and then accelerated the car, I've broken the corner down into three parts, I've maximized each phase of the corner. That gives me an idea of how I can maximize the braking, maximize the turning, and maximizing the acceleration initially. That gives me 90% of what the corner is. And then the tricky bit comes when you start to combine a little bit of braking, a little bit of trail braking and turning in and 
not so much that you're losing the rear up turn in or not so much accelerating the exit that you're you're losing um, the, the rear or, or inducing understeer on the way out as well. So tip number three is break the corner down into braking, finish your braking, maximize your turning and then maximize your accelerating. That way you can gauge the maximum of all three and then you can start to combine those little fine intricate bits in the middle. So tip number four, now looking at the two laps, there's only one place on the black lap, so my fastest lap from the first run versus my fastest lap of the weekend, that the black lap is faster than the red lap. And we zoom into the complex just before the back straight here. So as you can see, I'm a bit more confident braking a little bit later and rolling a little bit more speed into the apex here. However, between this left-hand apex and this or the turning point for the right hand apex just before the back straight here that's the only bit of the track where I'm actually faster in this first session however when you actually look at the grand scale of things even though I'm faster between here and here it's actually an overall loss therefore what I learned from this is the fact that sometimes you need to pick where you want to be fast and where you want to be slow. There's no point in being on the absolute ragged edge and on the limit everywhere, especially when there's a complex of corners involved. So what I learned is that even though I can go in faster here and uh, I'm more confident with exploiting the grip of the tyre and grip of the car on the limit between turn in and apex, that's where I think the key mount speed has been found. But I now know that I don't need to maximise my speed in between this corner here because that's not the important corner. The next, the important corner is this corner here which leads on to the big back straight and that's where I'm going to maximise my time gain. So there's no point in me being fast in the middle here, I actually purposely be slower in the middle here so I can get a better run through this right hander, get on the full throttle sooner before this left hand apex and as a result I'm going to be gaining more speed onto the next straight. And you can see here there's six kilometers an hour difference between uh, the two laps, even though in the middle here there is four, seven kilometers an hour difference here. And when we look at the time slip, there is 0.26, I actually lose half a tenth in the middle of the two corners, but then by the time we get to halfway down the straight here, it's 0.35, so I've lost a tenth and a half um, because I tried to be fast in the middle of the complex rather than focusing on my exit. So make sure you pick out your key corners where you know you're going to need uh, key exits onto big long straights, that's where you're going to maximise your time gain. So how did I piece all that together from just one day of driving? It comes down to a lot of self-coaching, analysing, thinking about things, visualisation and reviewing your own driving basically. A lot of people I see on track days, they just want to go out and pound out and get their money's worth and get as many laps under their belt as they can. And little do they know, they're just wasting their energy that they have and just pounding round and round, not necessarily getting any faster. The way I try and break down my coaching sessions is 20 minutes on track, 20 minutes worth of review and 20 minutes worth of just literally not even thinking about what you've just learned to so subconsciously allow your mind to digest what you've learned on circuit. For me that's the most efficient way of using track time. I mean you can just go out there and pound laps around if that's what you want to do, if that's when you enjoy yourself but yeah personally from my experience that's the most efficient way to learn as much as possible in as short as this amount of time as possible. As I know, track time is pretty expensive. Obviously, instruction and coaching can massively increase your uh, learning curve, and make it much, much easier, much, much smoother. You'll be better, safer and faster and you won't even feel like you're doing it. Even if you are learning a new circuit, grab 20 minutes at the beginning of the day with an instructor because the sooner you can get an instructor in your car, the sooner you'll start doing the right thing and getting into the right habits, then if you have the instruction at the end of the day, you've already learned your bad habits, you have to unlearn your bad habits and relearn the, the new good habits. So yeah, I can't stress having an instructor enough. Uh, and yeah, if you are looking for a structure and coach at the Nürburgring, at Spa uh, or at any circuit in the UK, please make sure you contact me on my website and uh, I'd love to book a day with you guys. Put my video V-Box in your car and get you going nice and fast, nice and safe and making you a better driver overall. So Adam B, firstly, thank you very much for your suggestion and entering the competition. Well done for winning the prize. 
I hope that this video has given you an idea on how to build speed and build confidence when you get to a new circuit. The techniques that I've mentioned can also be applied to a new car or new track conditions as well. This is another part of the How To Motorsport series. We're going to continue to talk about topics like this. If there's anything you want covered, please make sure you mention it in the comments down below and stay subscribed to the channel for plenty more videos like this to come. Whilst you're here on the channel, make sure you check out my lap record on board down here. Make sure you check out my Bilsenberg vlog down here and make sure you subscribe, stay subscribed up here. Until next time, bis down.